What's going on guys, Flyby Simulations here, and yes, Sim Update 8 is officially out for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and with it, we have some great new changes, optimizations, and improvements coming to the simulator. Now, some of the notable changes or improvements or features that have been added to the simulator include a new marketplace interface, including a map that displays available airports with improved discoverability and a better navigation experience. With it, we also have a new private match game mode to the Reno Air Races that was introduced in a previous update quite early. Another big feature that the dev team have been raving about for quite a long time now is the new optional propeller simulation system that has been included with hundreds of moving surfaces covering the propeller realistically, which has been introduced to three different aircraft in the simulator, them being the Cessna 152, the Cessna 208 Bravo Grand Caravan X, and the Beechcraft King Air 350i. They all use this new propeller simulation system. This improves the propeller effects such as P-Factor as well as feathering, prop drag, etc. However, most importantly with these sim updates, we get some fantastic performance optimizations as well as stability improvements with the sim. And as you guys can probably judge from the title and thumbnail of this video, in today's video, we're going to be covering and more importantly, comparing the different performance metrics between sim update 7 and sim update 8 as best as possible. Alright, so the way this video actually works is that I've tested both versions of the simulator in three properly simulated conditions. So I've tried to maintain as many controlled variables as possible, which includes the time of day, the place, even the scenery that I'm flying into. And I've basically covered three separate landings using the flyby wire A32 and X mod to judge the performance between both of them. So you guys are going to be seeing in the background, there's going to be a split screen view. Sim update seven is going to be on the left and sim update eight is going to be on the right. My PC specifications are linked down in the description section of the video. It also includes the undervolts and the overclocks I have applied to my system. So you guys will be able to contextualize the information you guys are seeing on screen. So be sure to check that out as well. Finally, as usual, it does take a little bit of effort to actually compile these videos and sort of put them out for the community in a timely manner. So if you guys could find it in you to just take one second and give this video a like, maybe subscribe to the channel and also hit that little bell icon so you guys can stay up to date with all of my videos, that would be absolutely fantastic. I also have a Discord server which is linked down in the description section of the video. We talk about everything from real life aviation to, you know, um, different current events that are happening around the world as well as flight simulation, most importantly. So if you guys want to join that and be part of this thriving yet small community as of now, please make sure to join it via the link in the description section of the video. With that all said, let's jump into the performance testing and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the first flight test we're going to be doing is at Rome Fiumicino International Airport, ICAO code Lima India Romeo Foxtrot. We're on a 20 nautical mile final to runway 25 at the airport and I have set the time of day to 12 p.m. or noon. The weather preset used in this particular case is the rolling clouds preset from Weather Preset Pro, which is a payware add-on. That's how I can maintain some consistency. If I did go for live weather, um, I mean, the times of day might differ and stuff like that. So we might get some inconsistent readings. That's why I'm using a particular preset, which is the rolling clouds preset. As for the add-ons being used in this particular case, the scenery being used for Rome International Airport itself is completely stock. It is what comes with Microsoft Flight Simulator out of the box, so no changes there. I have used Real Taxiways Europe as an add-on to enlarge the taxi signages. Again, this is consistent across both versions, so it's not that I've used Real Taxiways in Sim Update 8 and not in Sim Update 7. Real Taxiways Europe is being used in both versions, so, and it doesn't really have a big performance impact. All it does is it increases the sizes of some of the taxiway signages, improves the illumination, and so on. Now, some general observations from what I saw in this testing is that the frame rates were up by around about 5 to 10%, which corresponds to around 2 to 3 FPS gain in Sim Update 8 versus Sim Update 7. However, as I said at the beginning of the video, the frame rates are not the only thing to look at here. Stability is also something to look at. I personally believe that the Sim Update 8 is much smoother than Sim Update 7, which is especially apparent when you pan around the cockpit. Um, you'll notice that like the panning itself is a very smooth motion. You'll see that there's no screen tearing happening, there's no stuttering happening, and so on. So I think that that's something that's been greatly improved, although the uh, actual performance difference in the frame rates might be a little marginal. I want you guys to especially keep an eye on the FPS counter as we approach the runway because I think there's about 3 FPS difference when we approach the runway in Sim Update 8 versus Sim Update 7. So I'll leave you guys to the rest of the approach, I'll see you guys on the second test.
Alright guys, so hope you guys enjoyed the first test. For the second test, as you guys can probably see, we are at London Heathrow International Airport, ICAO code Echo Golf Lima Lima. Now for me personally, this airport, along with a few other airports in the States, as I mentioned in my previous video, are probably the most taxing on my CPU, my GPU, as well as on my RAM, and that's why I decided to test on this airport. It's very um, sort of heavy from a performance standpoint. The time of day in this particular test is set to 4.30 p.m. in the evening. The scenery being used is payware for uh, Heathrow Airport, which has recently released any scene London Heathrow Airport scenery. And the weather preset is the light rain preset, again taken from the weather preset pro add-on. Um, I've manually edited the cloud layer to be a little higher to improve the visibility on approach and to also tax the GPU a little bit. Uh, the reason I've done this is so that the tessellation effects and the anisotropic filtering effects increase the workload on the GPU so we can actually see some uh, sort of performance degradation or the performance differences between both the versions of the simulator just to see how efficient sim update 8 is in comparison comparison to some update 7. This is because it has to draw multiple cloud layers and light shafts and stuff like that. Now, for me personally, from what I can see, the performance improvement in London Heathrow is marginal, but it can still be seen as we approach the runway, um, especially at around 1,000 feet, maybe 500 feet or so, as well as when you actually approach the runway, you'll see that um, the frames are a little higher, maybe 1 FPS or 2 FPS, nothing crazy. It's marginal, as I said, but it is still evident. Uh, you guys can judge it for yourselves, and I'll leave you guys to the rest of the approach, so enjoy!
500. Alright guys, so the third and final test is here at Sydney Kingsford International Airport, ICAO code Yankee Sierra Sierra Yankee. Now as you guys can probably tell, this test is obviously there to test the nighttime performance within the simulator. The time of day is set to 10 p.m. and I'm using the scattered clouds preset that is stock Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's one of the presets that actually comes shipped with the simulator itself. I'm not using Weather Preset Pro in this case. The scenery in this case is again payware. This is Fly Tampa, Sydney. So uh, again, it should tax my system appropriately for this test. I'm not using the freeware Sydney because regardless of how populated the city is, for some reason, Sydney seems to perform amazingly for me and Fly Tampa does tax my GPU a little bit. So maybe it's a little bit more appropriate for a test where we're actually trying to stress the system as much as possible. Now, as for the general performance improvements, this test is actually where I saw the greatest increase in performance in Sim Update 8 versus Sim Update update 7 nearly 15 to 25 percent as you'll see on approach as well as on landing again just like london heathrow airport keep an eye on the fps counter as we approach 500 feet maybe 300 or 200 feet as well as when we're actually coming in for a touchdown in sim update 8 i had nearly 37 or 38 frames whereas on sim update 7 it was as low as 31 to 32 so that's a pretty big improvement it's nearly five or six frames so be sure to check that out for yourselves anyways with all that said i'll leave you guys to the approach uh, enjoy and i'll see you guys for the concluding remarks Marks. Four hundred. 
300. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so hope you guys enjoyed the landing. I did float that Sydney landing a little bit in both cases. I don't know what was wrong with me. Maybe the nighttime approach kind of had me winded a little bit, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys it actually gave you an insight into what the performance statistics look like in Sim Update 8 versus Sim Update 7. Now, I know some of you guys might be asking what my settings are. I've actually gotten these comments quite a bit on my previous videos. People are asking what my settings are, what my, how do I get my simulator to look like this, what sort of shaders and stuff like that I'm applying. I'm actually planning on creating a fully detailed and comprehensive video covering all of that stuff very, very shortly. So if you guys haven't already done that yet, make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit that bell icon so you guys get notified as soon as I upload that video and you guys can make your simulators look the way mine does right now. Also, as I said before, make sure to join the Discord server down in the description section of the video. There's a link to that. You guys can join my community. It's a small but thriving community, and we cover everything from flight simulation to current events to everything happening in the aviation and aerospace world. So make sure to join that. I'd love to have you guys there and have a chat about performance with you guys over on the Discord server as well. And just as a concluding remark to this video itself, I personally feel that the performance has been improved. And as I said before, even though the performance numbers might not be the biggest jump that we maybe had seen in Sim Update 6 or 5, I, I don't know, one of the updates where they massively improved the CPU and GPU utilization, which actually ramped up frames by around 100 to 200 percent. It was a few updates ago, I remember, but it's nothing like that. Obviously, that was a big update. This one is marginal, but it does fix some of the issues such as the stability, the crash to desktops being much much less frequent and stuff like that. And that's very exciting to see. So all in all, pretty happy with this update. Let's see over the next few days of testing if something else crops up. I'll make sure to sort of update you guys with that information. But as for now, thanks for flying by.